Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our first Sunday worship service for 2019. Yay! Um, I thought we would begin with getting up to greet one another. Uh, good morning, or if we haven't greeted one another yet, a happy new year. So let's get up on our feet. <laughs> Glad to see the happiness and cheer. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward this morning to praising the Lord with the hymns that have been chosen today. But before we go into a time of singing, let's commit this worship service to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for ushering in 2019 with such joy in our hearts from Christmas. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing those who have may been on holidays back with us safely and for giving them a special time of worship for you as well. We want to pray that as we come together now to bring you praise, would you please be with us specially? Help us to still our hearts and to focus on you, that we may bring you praise that is acceptable and that truly honors you. We pray all this in your son's precious name. Amen. So to start the year with praise in our hearts is something to definitely give thanks to God for. With this new year comes new things to look forward to. You know, there may be special milestones in your life to be experienced, to be reached, new things to learn, or new experiences in life to come. But if I were to look forward to this year with just my plans in mind, you know, that goodness would only last maybe less than a month, maybe just a month. Soon the newness of these things would eventually fade. But, you know, I'm really thankful that this year, we have started off the year learning about what God's work would be in our lives. And this perspective makes me definitely want to praise the Lord as we start 2019, and it makes it a year that I'm looking forward to. You know, looking forward to the year, not with my plans in mind, but with hope in the Lord, is something that fills me with far greater hope than what I could do on my own. And we learned at DML that God doesn't give up on us, even when we have given up on ourselves, or when we think others have given up on us. You know, we learned that this God would be there for us. And that's one thing that I'm dwelling on as I look forward to 2019. That God would even want to work in our lives and not abandon us, and he would want to continually relate with us is one thing that fills my heart with praise and thanksgiving to him today. You know, knowing that there is a year ahead of God possibly working in my life is something that really does bring the heart to praise him. And it gives me something to rejoice in God for. You know, a goal that I have for this year is to have a greater regard for God, that I would bring praise that would truly honor his name, and that he would take that first place in my heart, that I would truly be able to honor him as the great God that he is. And I'm looking forward to learning so much more about the greatness of our Lord and how we can respond with great praise to him. So the first hymn that we're singing today is Rejoice, the Lord is King. May we lift our voice in praise to God, thanking him for being the one that reigns in our lives and in our hearts. Let's sing our first hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Thank you for your singing. Although there is much to look forward to in the year that is to come, there is also the reality of life. The reality of hardship to face too. You know, with these things that we have to face in the new year, the challenge of having a heart of praise to God throughout the year is definitely a challenge. You know, there is a challenge not to be distracted, not to be downhearted, or to be discouraged from praising Him. And that is definitely a goal that I'm setting for myself this year as well. You know, there were times in the last year uh, in the year that just passed, that a heart of praise wasn't always the case for me. Sometimes the troubles in life drained me in a way that I didn't expect it to happen. 
You know, these were from personal challenges, particularly from the health challenges that my dad faced last year, and that he's going to have to face as we go into this year. You know, those concerns were things that weighed on my heart, and it made them heavy. And rather than it being filled with praise and being uplifted, you know, they were weighed down instead. And I didn't think about the prayers that God had answered for my family for so many years already and what he has done for us for so long. You know, these personal challenges were things that bogged me down. And as I look to the new year, I don't want to be focused on them. Not at all. You know, the world also is going to be, I mean, the world, the way that it's going, would not bring a lot of hope to the heart either alongside these personal challenges. But when I focus on the Lord, that he would be that God who would be completely righteous in his ways, that he would be the one who would be a righteous king to reign over us, who seeks to restore us to him and draws us with love to him, those are the things that really bring the heart to give thanks to him and to praise him. And that's what I want to choose to focus on as this year goes on. You know, this experience of being downhearted and heavy-hearted has challenged me not to repeat the same this year, and that I would challenge in my heart to bring praise to him always. You know, I want to seek to be one who would remain in him, to remain in the great God that he is, and a God who won't tell others of our shameful things that we have done, but humble us instead in discretion, a king who would receive us even when we have strayed from him, and a king who would sing over us even though we may not have a heart of praise that would match that. He would still do that for us. You know, these thoughts of God and his righteousness make me want to seize every opportunity that I have this year to sing praise to him, to not let the moments of praise that we have pass us by, it is one thing to say this, that he is deserving of praise, but the challenge for me is to be one that awaits in my heart praise for the Lord, for, the, for who he is, for the great God that he is. So the second hymn that we'll be singing this morning is Be Thou My Vision. May we sing this song to the Lord, this hymn, that our hearts would be stayed upon him to praise and honor his name throughout the year. So, may we rise and sing our second hymn for today, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you for singing. You may be seated. I would now like to pass this time to Pastor Chris. Thank you. Well, we're going to begin in prayer together and uh, really appreciate what Elijah shared. I, I really do. There's a lot of uh, it, it's a joy because you, you watch this boy grow and you compare with what he says in the earlier of 2018 and then you watch over the year and to begin 2019 speaking like that, able to see God's hand in life is very uncommon for young people. It's not, it's not, sorry, it's not very common for young people and, and to see this is, is, is wonderful. It really is we're going to pray for uh, Uncle Henry, and uh, Auntie June just updated, and he's now in um, Sir Charles Gardner, uh, moved from Fiona Stanley, because Fiona Stanley has basically said, there's nothing more we can do for you. Um, draining water, half the time cannot, we, we just can't do that. We've got to transfer you that um, they could look into your liver and help you carefully. So there's a number of things that the doctors are hoping to do that uh, God willing would help uh, Uncle Henry until he is able to go for a liver transplant. Um, it's it's going to be challenging, uh, 2019, in more ways than one for Uncle Henry and the family, Elijah. And it's just good to hear Elijah speak like that. And he said, this is my focus. This is what my focus will be. Good focus to begin with. Well, let's, let's bring uh, this matter to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you, even as we begin. 
a new year looking ahead with challenges, with difficulties, and even more so, needing to seek your wisdom, strength, and grace. We thank you for those who continue to hold firm to the faith, and we pray that you would encourage their hearts in the family of Uncle Henry, Auntie June, Elijah, in Enoch. And we pray that you would give to Uncle Henry that strength that he needs to continue to fight this battle to the very end. And we pray that you would be there with him to strengthen him and to help him to see your greatness in all these things that we're going through and to be able to see your work in life. Help us also to see this. And so often we are blind by and short-sighted by success. We are unable to see your greater work. And we pray this morning that you would help us indeed. We ask that you would bless in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin with a new series of messages that we are hoping to share with you. Um, from Psalm 145, okay, uh, Sunday, and then next week I will not be here. I'll be in Singapore. I'll be attending a wedding of one of our, uh, used to be our overseas student, Juo Yi. She's getting married, and uh, she has a you know, wonderful heart of uh, love for Bethel. And then, you know, she's asked whether I could be there for her. And so I said, yes, this was planned a year ago. And uh, I was meant to be there for our trip to India. She timed it in a way that I could be there because I was going to India and then uh, be there for her wedding. So she... I always ask, when are you getting married? Because if people invite me, I can't be, be there for everybody's wedding if it clashes with ministry. And ministry will always come first. And so she said, when are you going to India? So she literally planned her wedding around when am I going to be in India. That was a year ago. And then the India trip was cancelled. So I said to her, I'm still coming. <laughs> that was a bit of relief because she booked all the things, booked the hotel, booked the, the place for dinner and, and everything, told everybody. And uh, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Not that I'm, uh, to me anyway, an important part of it. Uh, to me, I am not. I'm not the one officiating her wedding. I'm, I'm there because, you know, for, for her. And um, it, it is really special to have such a friendship and a relationship that you build over the years. And uh, so next week I will be away. Uh, Pastor Milton will be here, and he will carry on with his theme uh, on, the, uh, on the cross of Christ. And then when I come back, we will resume Psalm 145. It's going to take a whole month. Okay, it really will take a whole month, and that to me is exciting, Right? Now, let's turn to Psalm 145 a little bit, and then uh, we begin here, okay? Now, this is what we want to know. Psalm 145 is a psalm of David. Now, we can see that written here in the text, okay? Now, this is quite a special psalm in more ways than one. One, it is the last psalm of David attributed to him. He has written, what, not, not him, we, in the book of Psalms, written by many authors, there is 150 psalms. Okay? And there is a lot of rich thoughts in there. It's taken me seven years to, to, to teach this and a prayer meeting. Seven years. Of which, 150, David writes 75 of them. That is pretty significant. Imagine that. Out of this collection of sacred writing, 
hailed and exalted as the Psalms, 150. Not one. The great Moses wrote one or two. Solomon, maybe two. David, 75. That has his uh, initials there. And that is pretty amazing. Right? He wrote um, many psalms on praise to God. Psalm 145, we, this literally is called the pinnacle of David's praise to God. So if you put it all together, the, the, you know, this is, you, you see how an author or a poet or a, a craftsman in their early years, but you want to see them at their peak, this one. So this just to help you appreciate this psalm a little bit better, okay? And um, what do we see in this psalm? And what we see is growth. And this is something I, I really want to encourage us all to do as we begin a new year, grow, right? Growth is a natural thing for children, and sometimes we only think it's for kids, or young people, that they have new experiences, uh, something to look forward in the new year, right? For my, my kids, uh, just then, uh, just before I came into the worship service, my son came, came in and asked, Dad, can you help me out here? He's a six-year-old boy, and he said, I, he's attending his first uh, junior worship. He's gone from crash to upstairs, and he's saying, I don't know where the room is. So he was a little bit lost. And so he said, Dad, can you come and, help, and show me how to, to go out? Happy like anything. And so this today, I, I, uh, not today, but I actually got him a new Bible. Not that he can read. Uh, you know, this is it marks the occasion. See, my joy. So the, the, I've given Bibles to so many people. And here is uh, giving a Bible to your own son. It's called an explorer's Bible. Uh, and then it, is, it takes up the weight of all his entire bag. So, you know, to begin junior worship upstairs, that to be, that's just exciting. A little bit, you know, challenging but exciting. Um, and, you know, you watch them grow, the children, and there is many things to rejoice in. So the other day was having conversation with uh, the... the the, the, the family, and he was going to be playing his violin. Yeah, yesterday it was. His teacher invited all the students to go and play yeah, in, in her house. It's like, like a mini workshop. And so he said to me, that made me raise my eyebrow. He said, my girlfriend will be there. <laughs> I, wow, my eyebrows raised up. You know, the sister looked at him, the mother looked at him, I looked at him. And he said, yeah, well, what's the problem? My girlfriend Ivy will be there. And I'm like, look at the mother, who's Ivy? <laughs> to him, my friend, that is a girl, is girlfriend. And so, you know, to him, as a matter of fact, yeah, in fact, this other girl, also my girlfriend. I've got two, three girlfriends. <laughs> You know, of course, you say that when you're a six-year-old, it's cute, it's innocent. But when you're 16, not so cute. <laughs> no more cuteness. <laughs> you know, I got two drinks of what? <laughs> it, will be a, it will be challenging for those who are parents, and may you not have a weak heart. <laughs> right? You see, kids are funny. You know, to them, it's, you know, they look at a new year, new things, new words, they're trying to apply new things into their life, right? So this morning, I brought the kids to church. Aldine was cooking. And, uh, you know, I always remind Christabel, sometimes we can be a nag of parents sometimes. And, and then uh, I said to her, remember, don't wear slippers. See, I know, I'm wearing my sandal. It's mum approved. <laughs> wow, that is... Well, when your daughter starts talking back like that, then you know she's no longer a child. Mum approved. In other words, end of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> and it's challenging. You know, for us, 
do we look forward to growth? And I want to encourage us to do that, really grow. See, in this psalm, is wonderful. Sometimes you look at how it can be, okay? Because it, it helps us to see, okay, how David grew in his understanding of God. Has it something to grow in? Grow in understanding. He grew in his response to God. He grew in his praise given to God. He developed it to a high level. He certainly grew in having a mature understanding of what it means to extol God. Not many people do that. Okay, well, let's take a look at this psalm, and hopefully we can see that. Okay, now in verse 1, we read, this is, personal. And he says, I will extol you, my God, O King. And I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Amazing. I wonder whether we can actually even say those words meaningfully. To say, I will praise, I will bless every day. We do that every day. Once a week, maybe not, maybe, but every day. And he says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. This is the theme for January and February messages. What are we hope, hoping to do? One, let's begin the new year, dwelling on something that is better than just the news around us. Take time to dwell on the greatness of God. Two, and I hope we can be encouraged, really be encouraged to be able to see God, greatness, His hand in our life. And in response, be able to praise. These are our goals. Are they difficult goals to accomplish? Not really. It's a question of whether you would take it up. Okay, now we're going to take a look at The best thing to do is to look at the person's life because how can a person praise God like that? He says, I will extol you, my God, my King. You know, sometimes it's very hard to understand. It's very hard to understand. How come some people can do that? You need to see the reality of God in their life. Obviously. Right? To a person, God is just so unreal. No praise would come forth, obviously. They are not going to extol God, bless God every day because God is just so unreal to them, whether they come to church or not. That's not the point. The point is when to a person, God is real and they can see Him working in life, in everyday life things become different, okay? And we're going to take a look at David, for example, how uh, this became real for him, okay? Now, we're going to turn to a historical te- text over here, and um, 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now, this was a text I shared with my neighbor. My neighbor have, has motor neuron disease, MND, and maybe you're not familiar with this disease, but it is a terrible, terrible disease. He's a builder. And um, you know, much of his life, he's been very, very strong. Yeah, he's Italian. He's, you know, he's an um, uh, you know, Italian builder, my neighbor. And this disease has really took him off guard. He's not very, very old. And so, within a year, he's lost the strength 
to speak. And I was really challenging because I was at his house this week and um, he could not even cough phlegm because oh, there's no muscle to be able to do that. So he needs a machine that literally pumps air into him and sucks it out to bring out the phlegm. He cannot do it on his own. He's using a walker now. And I was told uh, in the new year, he decided he's going to stop eating because he can't. Every time he eats, he chokes and it, he just can't sleep. Though. It just unsettles him. So he, need, he's, he takes protein drinks and that's all. that. They, what is there to look forward in 2020? 19. Very interesting. One day he said to me, Chris, I had a dream. I said, well, uh, wh what happened? And he said, in this dream, my wife was reading Matthew 1. Now, here's the thing. We don't read the Bible. We hardly go to church. I, he hardly goes to church. I don't know what Matthew 1 is all about but it has got to be something. Could you please tell me what Matthew 1 is about? That was, that was quite interesting. That began. I said, I'll be happy to do that. Come over and, and uh, share with you what Matthew 1 is about. And so I did. Uh, the other, and then he asked whether I could go over to his place and pray for the family. And so I shared with him on this text, actually, 2 Samuel 7. And sometimes, here is our plans in life, and we have our own plans. And sometimes we cannot see there is a greater plan, and that is God's plan. And so this word was shared with him. And he asked whether I could come back again. I said, I will. I will plan to do that. But to me, that is pretty amazing. He cannot speak. He can't speak. Uh, family members is trying to work out what he's saying and then try to tell me what he is saying to me. He just makes sounds. And it is tough. And for a person to still be able to see, you know what? He's not bitter. He's not upset. You know what? I see there must be a greater plan. And I said, you are right. He's a person that doesn't come to church. He doesn't come to church. I said, you know what? You are right. To be able to see this, what can you see? Take a look at this text. And here is David. Why does he exalt God the way he does? Why does he say, I extol you? You are the great God. Why does he say that? Okay, well, let's take a look at um, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. And we read, And it came to pass when the king, this is David, was dwelling in his house, and the Lord has given him rest from all his enemies all around him. Right? The Lord has blessed him. The Lord has given him peace and rest. The enemies are not attacking him. And he says, look, I dwell in a house of cedar. So I was asking my friend, a house of cedar. And he just shakes it. That is impossible because cedar is a very expensive wood. To build an entire house of cedar, a palace of the finest wood from Lebanon, that is just tremendous. Oh, if you only when you have tremendous wealth like that, it just tells us this person has done well. He is able to dwell in a house of cedar. And he recognized God has given these things. And he says, how can I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells tent? 
And so he says to Nathan the prophet, uh, how, can, how can this be? In other words, he wants to do something for God. This is his plan. And, he's, and then Nathan said, go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. And it sounds good, right? What's in your heart, your plans? I want to build God a house. How can I live in a house of cedar and God's, you know, intents? That's, that's not right. And this is a God who's given me uh, peace and blessed me. And so he wants to do something for God. It, it's good, good, good idea. Now, we hear God speaking to Nathan and says, Go tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in it, in tent, in the tabernacle. Whenever I have uh, moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoke a word to anyone, to the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people? Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Is God asking for this? Your plan, David, is not exactly the same as my plan. Right? You want to build me a house of cedar? That's not my plan. What is my plan? This is something else. And so he tells David, okay? Verse 8, Now therefore say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. See, it's not in what he is go- wants to do for God. It's what God has done in his life. And a list of things we could see in what God has done for David. Where did he begin? Following the sheep. Following the sheep. What great things will you come out with? Nothing. If God did not take him out of there, he would have be the same. Do you see this? If God had not come into his life, if God is not involved in the life, where will he be? Following sheep. What change when God came into his life? God worked in his life. He took him out from following the sheep to become ruler over Israel. Now that is such a special thing. Verse 9, I have been with you wherever you have gone. Not wonderful. His father was not there to teach him, David. He had so many sons. The younger son, I'll just go and work somewhere. Work, work, look after the sheep. Saul was certainly not there to teach him either. Who was the one who really made a difference in the life of this person called David? God. Wherever he went, there God was to guide him, to lead him, to teach him. That's what it meant. It's more than just a nice saying, God be with you. Who was the one who really made a difference in the life of David? None other than God. That's why he wrote so many of these psalms in praise to God. He attributes it to God. Why? This is what God has done for him. He was there with him wherever he went. And in his earlier days, he was half the time running away from enemies. He was in the wilderness. He was all by himself. He had no one. Here God was with him. And that is just so wonderful, right? What else did God do for him? And he says, I have cut off all your enemies before you. 
and have made you a great name. So God cut off enemies. He was able to overcome many enemies. How is that even possible? What skill has he got? Well, this is how he made it. God was there. God made his name great like the great men on earth. Verse 11, look what God did. God promised him. He, now this is really special. Since the time I commanded, and this is what God says, okay? The Lord tells you that he will make you a house. God promised him that he will build him a house. Not a house of cedar. God is going to build him a dynasty. That is amazing. The divinic dynasty lasted throughout. His dynasty did not cease. Who was the one who built God? See, sometimes we can build something and it only lasts one generation. The next generation is gone. Right? Two generations, three generations, how long would it last? This year we celebrate 25 years as a church. How long will we last? We don't know. But if God is the one who builds it, that would be something worth considering. Okay? And so we see this. God says, I will build you a house. Verse 12. And he says, God will establish his son. When he, his days are fulfilled, meaning he, when he dies, right, he rests with his father, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for me. Now these, the plans go beyond you, it goes into the next generation. And of course, we know this to be Solomon. Verse 16, we read, how God promises to establish that kingdom, that throne forever. He says, His mercy will not depart. Your house, your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. You see, this is how you would look at why David wrote, why David says, I will bless the Lord. This is why. When you see God working his work in the life of the person. Without God, he would have nothing. Without God, he would have been still following the sheep. His name would not be great. His house would not be established. But with God, that made all the difference. Now, how did he respond? See, sometimes God can do so much and yet, People take it for granted. They don't respond. They just, yeah, so God can do it. Why don't you keep giving me? David was not like that. David was one who responded appropriately to God. And let's take a look at his response. Praise is very, very much a response. Okay, look at verse 18 now. He, this is what God did for him. And so his response, King David went in, sat before the Lord, right? He sought the Lord, and then he says to God, Who am I, O Lord? And what is my house? And what, you know, that you have brought me this far. You know, this is a great sense of gratitude. You know, I'm a nobody, who am I to deserve any of this? Just a shepherd boy. And you have brought me this far. Have you ever thought about life? You look at what you have today. Take time to think about where you used to be, how you began, how you started out. How far has God brought you? For David, he just stands it all. You know what? I... You, you know, who am I that you would do this? God has brought him this far. He felt so deeply moved. 
And then he says in verse 21, right? For your word's sake and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things to make your servant know them. Now, that is a gra gratitude, a heart of gratitude for all that God has done for him. And he said, these are great things. Why? Because he would have never accomplished them on his own. He would not. God took him out from the following sheep. God raised him up. Where did that wisdom come from? Where did that protection come from? How did he become where he is? Then he says, you know, God, you did this because you, according to your word, according to your own heart, that's God's heart. According to all this, you made me know you. You did this. That is his heart. And of course, he goes on further to extol God. Look what he says. And here is a wonderful response. Therefore, you are great, verse 22, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth whom God went to redeem for himself? None like you. You are great, O God. See, this is his response. Surely we must respond. What is a person, who is a person that really will extol God, will really praise God? This person, you know, God is obviously involved in his life. God has done great things for him. He knows he would not have made it in life if it wasn't for God. If God didn't take him out. If God did not bless if God did not strengthen him. And he has written so many psalms. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. And he makes a whole list that he will not forget God's benefits. And he has been healed, that he's been forgiven, that he has been so many things. That is a response that we need to have today. Has God brought you far? Now I look back and where, how things started. Uh, no way. Yeah, I look back and each day I, I look at these words again and I look at how the Lord has brought us, Aldine and I, from where we first started and where we are today. We cannot but give thanks to God. You see His work. You see His hand. What were you? Nothing. God saved you. God re rescued you. God was there with you wherever you went. And that includes three years in Singapore. That includes India. Wherever you went. And you look at all these things. Not your plans anymore. God's plans. Then that perspective changed. And, and look at the shift here. He begins to say, right, Lord, you are great. Not what I can do for you, but what you are doing. In verse 28, he says, now, O Lord God, you are God. Your words are true. What have you discovered over the years? What have I discovered? How true the word of God is. 13 years being here. 20 years as a Christian. What have I discovered? How true are your promises? That God is always true to his word. Right? And then he says, you have promised this goodness to your servant. His goodness to your servant. And so he says, now let, therefore let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever, O Lord O oh Lord God, you have spoken it, and with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed. This is my prayer. 
This is my prayer for my family. This is my prayer for the church. I look at what God is doing. Is God in your life? Is He involved? Has He brought you out of darkness, out of sin? Has He given you a second chance? Has He been there to guide? Has He been there to teach? And you have seen Him bless, build up to where you are today. What would that response be? Like David, I will extol you, O God. It's the least. I will bless you every day. But of course, without Him, every day is just meaningless. One man who found meaning later in life, actually, was the man by the name of, he was given this name, Colonel Sanders. Okay, we know him as KFC, the one who founded Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, this man really spent his life, he didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. There is, okay, meandering, tried different jobs, he joined the army, he tried sales, he tried everything. He couldn't find any meaning in life. It was a really sad, failed in so many things. He said, I actually applied to do this thing here, and I failed. He really failed. He, his marriage failed. What have, what have I got? Uh, so he, good thing, he knows how to cook. His mother was, you know, his father died when he was young. And so he had no choice. From a young age, he had to cook to feed a big family. And one of the things, they, their secret recipe was fried chicken. And that stayed with him. What can fried chicken do? Well, n- never say <laughs> that. And he said, well, I'm going to start a, a shop selling fried chicken behind a petrol kiosk. And whatever reason, of course, being in Kentucky, it was a hit. And people like it. You know, he sold it for $2 million. In his time, that was a lot of money. Was he a happy man then? The answer was no. So now that I have money at the age of 77, what am I going to do with myself? He was unhappy. So he, met, he had a friend who was a pastor. He said to him, can you really help me find God real in life? I have tried everything. And so his, this pastor was the one actually that helped him. And he said, can God really change me? I have been cursing and swearing, you rough person, for the longest time, at the age of 77. You, if God can take away my cursing, my swearing, that would be wonderful. And so he, he was the pastor and said, God can do that. You really want him to be working in your life? He said, yes, I, I really do. And so that fateful day, he made, he cried out, God, if you are really there, you would, you would be able to help me. His inclination to curse stopped, and he was shocked himself. What? Nothing. How can it stop? And you know what? From that day, he said, this God is real. This God is absolutely real. It was not his wealth that gave him his happiness. He had no wealth. That was no happiness there either. Wealth, also no happiness there either. And so he said, I want to be baptized. At 77 years old, this dear man was baptized. You want to talk about a late start? This is a late start. And he spent the rest of his life not accumulating wealth. He continued, of course. But you know what? He gave. He supported. His joy was in the giving and seeing the work of God bless. Sometimes we cannot see God's plan because we don't know God. Do you really know God? Begin wherever, young, old, 77, not too late. But please, don't, don't, don't push it. <laughs> don't push it. Begin somewhere. 
Let God show you His plan. And you will see what He can do in your life. I, for David, for where he began, I will build you a house. And it's more than just a fam, having a family. I will make your name great as the great men on earth. Why will I do this? That you may know, that his servant may know him. May we know him. Begin this work. Begin this year. You know, when we really discover God this way, when He is real to us, when we really know Him, watch the heart, it changes. And this was David. Until he was able to say, you know, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. And he, after many years, continues to see, continues to search. Let this be our prayer. As we begin a new year, as we come to the Lord's table very, very shortly, can this year be meaningful? Can this year be filled with a great sense of life? Let it begin with knowing God. Okay, well, let's pray together. Our Father, we pray this morning that you would help us to know you afresh to grow in knowledge of you, to discover you, that we may see you working in our life, that we may see your hand in life, that we pray that you would bless as we come to the Lord's table this morning. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Those who are assisting in communion, please uh, come on over. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to seeing, learning, watching what God is going to do here in our church. But don't just watch. Be part of it. Don't be a watcher. Don't be taking a back seat. Be there. Let God work in through you. Let 2019 be significant. That is going to be a wonderful challenge. We celebrate 25 years. How many of those 25 years you can say, I was there and I have seen what God is doing in and through us as a church together. And when we can, your joy will be even greater. How wonderful it is to be, be part of this. How, how does it begin? It begins with belonging to the Lord through Christ, through the cross, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this, the Lord's table, Holy Communion as we call it, is always a special moment that we remember where we used to be, where the Lord has taken us out of, out of sin, out of darkness, into His everlasting kingdom, into light, in Christ. And so the Lord Jesus Christ and His name is someone we hold in high regard and bless. And we're going to sing together a beautiful hymn, even as we remember the bread representing the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, prepared by God, planned by God, given to us. Is it easy to understand the plans of God? No, it takes God to reveal. No one thought, how could God allow His own Son to die, and that is a wonderful thing. What good can come out of that? the salvation of the whole world. And we learn to trust what God can do. 
sometimes life is filled with things. And we, what good can come out of so much evil, so much pain, so much sorrow and suffering? Can any good come out of it? Only God can turn that around. Through Christ, God can turn our lives around too. Well, as we have the bread passed around this morning, let's go back to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light, the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. And faith is needed. I received my sight. And now, I'm happy all the day. How wonderful it is to be able to bless the Lord every day because you see His hand every day. I, I wish you this for the new year, that you will have more life. You know, some of you are aging before your time. You're already getting older and older and tireder and tireder, and you are only 40. Right? There is more life in the aged care that I visit than some of the people here. I really pray for you. May you have this life that the Lord gives. And this is a wonderful life that comes from Him. Okay? Well, let's sing this hymn together as we have the bread passed around. Let's partake of this bread prayerfully together. Our Father, we thank You for giving to us the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is that light, and that light that gives life. And in Him we find both light and life to overcome the darkness, to overcome the burdens and the despairs so often consumes us in life. We pray for a renewal of this life that the Lord gives. Help us to see your greatness, your power, your plan fulfilled in our life. Help us to see this by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ at you. We ask that you would bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, sometimes we don't realize how powerful, how in. You know, until you read how people are just so ensnared by sin, they cannot get out of it. You, you read of how they tried everything possible. They tried to leave the community, they tried to get away, and yet they are just so addicted to whatever is hurting them. And it's painful. It really is painful. How can one really have the power to overcome sin? You know, we sing a beautiful hymn. It took nothing less than the Lord Himself. And every time we have the cup passed around, we remember those blood, His blood was shed for us. And what Jesus said, the Son comes to give, set you free. And when the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. How precious are those words, freed to a person who is totally addicted and unable to break free from the grips of sin. Freed. That is what the Lord has done for us. So David looks at what God has done and cannot but give praise. This morning, let's look back at what Christ has done for us at Calvary and let us sing to the Lord praise. Let's sing together this next hymn. Calvary covers it all as the cup is passed around. Let's partake of this cup together prayerfully. Our Father, we pray that you would do a special work in our heart, in our life. A work that would defeat sin. And it's only by your power. And so, Lord, we pray for cleansing. 
this morning. Cleanse us of the bitterness that we have in our hearts. Cleanse us of the misgiving we have towards other people. Cleanse us of pride. Cleanse us of the sinful thoughts that we harbor inside us. Anger that we feel. We pray that you would fill our hearts with your love all over again. And we may be able to see you afresh. We ask that you would do this new work in us, which only you can do. As you took David out of his, where he was, take us out of this darkness too. And place us into your light. We ask that you would hear this, our prayer. And bless our hearts as we seek you this new year. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's prepare an offering to be given to the Lord this morning. In communion, we remember the sacrifice and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also remember His resurrection and His power of life. And I thought this would be a wonderful hymn to conclude Communion Sunday, He Lives, 220. The Lord lives in our hearts, in our life, that you don't want, you will bless the Lord. You try it. Begin each day. Even if nobody understands you, you do it like David. He didn't care if anybody didn't understand why he is so happy, why he will bless the Lord. He knows what God has done in his life. We know what God has done in our life, and we will bless him. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. That is a wonderful chorus. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. That's how real he is. He walks with me, talks with me along life's narrow and difficult way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. And this is a wonderful answer. He lives within my heart. Let's rise and As we conclude this worship service, let us sing, let us bless, let us praise the name of the Lord, the one who lives. Let's ask the Lord to bless as we go from here this morning. And now may this great and mighty God, the God who worked and redeemed Israel, the God who turned David's life around from one who followed sheep to become a ruler, a great name. That same God bless our hearts this morning. And we pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ will be given to us. May the Spirit of God help us, enlighten us to see God's greatness and the great work that he is doing. May he give that wisdom, knowledge, to discover the plan of God, and to see his power working in our life. And may the name of the Lord Jesus Christ himself always be extolled, blessed, and magnified, now and forevermore. Amen.